To assure resin gets everywhere in all the nooks and crannies, I'm going to take this chip brush and paint resin into all the little holes. Today, I intend on making two spinning tops. Sounds like a fun project. Bought it at Penn State Industries. Comes with all the hardware you need to make a top, including a little bitty ball bearing. That's the smallest ball bearing I can ever remember seeing. Let's see how it works. I have a couple of blanks. This one I made specifically. Resin and a pine cone. And this was just leftover resin from other projects. It didn't quite fit in the mold so I poured them into this cup to use as a blank at a later date. And today is the day I'm going to use this one. Let's get busy. This is the first time I've made a spinning top so I'm going to do the unexpected and look at the directions a bit it says I need a blank one and a half inches long by two and a quarter to two and a half inches it says square but we're gonna turn it round anyway so I think this will do fine let's mark an inch and a half off of this these blanks and get cutting. Thought about it a little bit and I've come to the conclusion that the lathe is a safer way to cut this. The next step is to glue these brass tubes into the blanks. For that, I have some five minute epoxy here. I turn them upside down to get the, the glue towards the tip so it won't take so long to pour. Meanwhile, as you can see these are shiny brass tubes smooth the glue won't stick very well so take some sandpaper this is 80 grit 120 will work fine something fairly rough so you can scratch up the surface I've also used thick CA glue to glue the brass tubes into the blanks but I like the five minute epoxy better it cures faster 
Uh, I wouldn't want to do CA glue and attempt to turn it on the same day. I usually wait for the following day for it to cure. But five minute epoxy, well, I usually wait a half an hour, but five minutes it probably works. So when you glue the brass tubes into the rings, I'll leave just a little space on each side for trimming later on. And with a twisting motion to spread the glue around. Sometimes I'll take the other end and put that in there, get a little more glue on the inside. Being pestered by flies today. Okay, there's a little space for trimming to make sure it's all squared up before we put it on the leg. Our next step is to trim the blank down so it is even with the end of the brass tube. For that, we'll be using a barrel trimmer. These come with various inserts different sizes depending on the size of the brass tube you need to trim this one is already installed is the appropriate size for our blank here looks like a little bit of the glue got in there so it doesn't want to quite go through there we go should be a snug fit but able to turn freely also comes with a little allen wrench to replace the insert or tighten it down as needed one thing to be cautious about is the sharp pointy end sticks through the other side of your blank sometimes. You don't want to hold it this way or you'll definitely be visiting the emergency room. And we don't want that. Before you start, take note of how far down your brass tube is from the end. This one, I don't know if you can see, is about an eighth, eighth of an inch from the end. Don't want to go significantly beyond that. In fact, you want to get very close to that. Put it in there, make sure it's spinning freely. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. very quickly sometimes depending on the hardness of what you're trimming you get a nice square end and you can just see the shine of the brass tube coming through this is cutting pretty quick so I have to be cautious that I don't go too far <laughs> To mount the blank on the lathe, you'll need a mandrel. This is an adjustable mandrel. What that means is you loosen it here, and it's a collet fit, and you can slide the mandrel shaft in and out to accommodate the size of your blank. So you see, we're gonna to have to make it somewhat shorter. We also need the appropriately sized bushings. The end of our turning will be the same diameter as the outside of the large part of the bushing. The smaller part fits inside and secures it onto the mandrel. So you put the bushing and then your blank. And the other bushing. And have some of the threads sticking out so you can 
screw the knurled knob on to the end and tighten it down. MT2 taper fits right in my lathe. Make sure you get the right size for the lathe you have. The other end is supported by the lives, uh, live center on the uh, tail stock. Don't want that too tight or the pressure will deflect the mandrel and you won't get a round turn. Now the instructions say the best uh, way to turn a top is into a flying saucer shape. It even gives several examples of potential shapes you can use. I definitely want some mass out towards the edge. And as you can see, especially on this one, they do taper the turning into the size of the bushing that's on the end. So let's proceed and make some turns. Make some shavings. Now you can do these turnings with a small spindle gouge up to a medium spindle gouge I would say or a smaller carbide tool. I'm going to do one with each. Let's start with the carbide. All right, this time we're going to do it with a spindle gouge. Advantages and disadvantages of using carbide versus spindle tool or traditional tools. As you can see on this, I have to angle the spindle uh, gouge correctly to the piece or I will definitely get a catch or a chip or something. Um, as far as the carbide tool goes, the default presentation of the cutting edge to the piece is cut into the back of the tool. So basically it goes flat every time for the most part unless you have something else you want to do. I do tend to angle it once in a while but you can see in there here in this shot that I am turning tool as I go around the curve. I didn't do that, but I definitely get a catch. Um, one large advantage for the traditional tools is the cut is much cleaner. And, uh, you'll spend less time sanding as a result, and I would rather turn than sand any day. Now for assembly. If you don't read the instructions for any other part of this kit, then read them for the assembly. It's important what order things go in. They press into the brass tube, and if you get the wrong one in the wrong place, it's really difficult to get it back out. So, according to the instructions, first step is to press this itty bitty tiny little baby ball bearing into this piece right here. Let's do that. Okay, 
like so. And you press this. Into your top. Make sure it's oriented in the right direction. Follow the instructions. Oops, fingers. piece right here. It goes in the other end. press fit into the assembly. Finally, gets pressed into the ball bearing. The last bit is to tie the string on. I put a figure eight knot in it and hope it's large enough. I haven't had one of these since I was a kid, so my technique is a bit off, but. do the other one off camera and show you some pictures when we're done. <laughs> 